I've always favored quality over quantity and recently I've had an interesting conversation with a very wise man who said that we should value the products that we own and I happen to agree as well. So with that in mind, I thought I would explore how far one color can take me and to demonstrate that you do not need to break the bank to create art that is classy and striking. I vote for less colors but of good quality. And if you're curious about my now simplified palette of colors and other things that I consider to be essentials when starting out in watercolor, you can check out the video that I will link in the right hand corner and also in the description. For this video, I settled on Prussian blue, which is my favorite blue. And to understand and appreciate that color, I practiced on a different sheet of paper with different brush strokes and also varying the intensity or value uh, of that color by playing with the amount of water added to the paint. So instead of using three or four different blues, I achieved the same results with just one blue. I'm working on B paper, which is 140 pound in weight, is made of cotton. The piece measures 6 inches by 9 inches, and I have taped it to a piece of glass. Also separated that in the middle with drafting tape, so I would have two paintings going on simultaneously. I really like working that way, I think it cuts down on time. And one I will convert into a greeting card, the other one will remain as a painting. But I can really see um, how the one of those pieces can be also cut in half again to create bookmarks. My first step was to create a very light background by using a bit of paint at the bottom of each of these paintings. I left the top pretty much white so that I would infuse a bit of light to or luminosity to the whole painting because we're just using one color. We have to be a little bit more creative. I'm going to be doing some leaves instead of flowers this time because I needed to branch out a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. If you are seeing a little bit of a hand to the left of me, that is not me. <laughs> I haven't grown a third hand. I have enlisted the help of my daughter uh, to get some bee shots. Uh, one tip for you, it's very important to let each layer dry before you add more leaves one on top of the other. And I've added a tiny bit more paint to my mixing well so that I would get uh, a darker color. It's still pretty light. And the leaves are done with a one stroke motion. Uh, essentially, it just is um, pointing the tip of your brush on your paper with very light pressure. And then moving away from me, I just flatten the bristles so that more paints, uh, more paint gets deposited as I'm moving away from me again and then eventually I lift and that creates a very simple leaf. I would say, oh this is just me playing around by adding more paint while the leaves are wet which is another fun thing to do. I would say that uh, the one stroke leaf is something that I still have to practice so if you are beginning don't get discouraged. <laughs> you will be able to do it you just need to practice i know it sounds very lame and people are probably very tired of um, hearing this but there is no other way you just have to do the work and eventually it will become more familiar uh, you just need to exercise the muscle in your hands and muscles have memory so eventually your hands will remember how to do uh, the one stroke leaf while I'm adding the leaves, I'm also, sorry, shaky, <laughs> shaky tripod. <laughs> there were three people in the studio at that time with me. We had our friend Denise who was doing some admin stuff for me. <laughs> so it was a bit chaotic, but very fun. Um, yes, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the composition. And I'm sorry, I'm missing some footage. Um, while I'm adding the leaves, there are three things that I was mindful of. I didn't want to have the stems of those leaves being equidistant because that's not what happens in nature. So it's very important to overlap those leaves. Also, the branches needed to be set apart from each other or on top of each other, depending. 
The other way, the other thing is I'm always mindful of having a visual triangle. I've talked about this before. It's a very common, I don't want to call it rule, but it kind of is, <laughs> of uh, any piece of art. You want the eyes to travel all around your painting. So one way to achieve that is to have elements that are formed in a visual triangle. So to translate that into the painting that I'm doing right now, I have clumps of leaves kind of like in the center, but a little bit off center like I didn't want it dead in the center they're quite tall the ones on the left are more towards the bottom and then I will also add later on some darker ones to the right kind of like halfway between my tallest and my smallest and then that way that creates that famous visual triangle that everybody talks about uh, you can use the positioning of the elements to do that or you can also use the intensity of the colors uh, because of course the eye will be attracted to the dark colors so there's different ways to achieve that and here's a perfect example of me messing up the leaf and so i'm just using the brush to fill in the gaps in the shape and that's that <laughs> so please 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 practice but don't get upset because it should be fun and it should be relaxing. I know I said monochromatic, but come on, <laughs> please allow me to use gold. <laughs> Although I will not add gold to the painting per se, I'm using the gold to mix with the Prussian blue. I wanted to experiment with that and see what I could come up with without making a green, because of course gold is yellow based. And the color I got reminded me of Daniel Smith duochrome cobble blue, if you're familiar with it, which is pretty cool because that color uh, by Daniel Smith is quite expensive. So if you have gold and Prussian blue in your arsenal, try mixing it together and you will have that fabulous, it's almost like a separating color, but the gold kind of goes, it stays on top and the blue outlines the shape. It's... You'll see from the photos at the end what I mean, but it was very fun to work with. So now I'm just wondering, can I do that with my other colors? How cool would that be? <laughs> so more experimenting to come. Um, this was such a fun session. I used that mixture to create a few dots to the background and I will be adding three leaves on each painting. So I didn't want to add more than that because I still wanted to uh, retain that monochromatic quality.
I apologize for the shaky footage on this one. Uh, this was me holding the iPhone while I was painting. I think my daughter was busy doing the dishes, for which I'm very grateful for. So we're done, and I'm removing the tape. Another question I get often is how to remove the tape without tearing the paper. And my secret is I use a little bit of heat to soften up the glue and I'm usually successful. You still have to be careful though and don't apply too much heat because you risk the chance of having the glue sticking to the paper as opposed to the tape. So just heat it up a little bit and then just be careful removing it. You shouldn't have no problem. I will cut these two pieces away by uh, cutting in the middle. One will be used just as a straight up painting and the other one I will trim around the edges a tiny bit to add it to a piece of cardstock to create a greeting card. And I think anybody would be very happy to receive a card like this. <laughs> if I can toot my own horns. <laughs> I have many multiple horns <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Um, I think it's always great to get a handmade card and I think this card is very classy. It still packs a punch, I believe. Anyways, I don't know what you think about it, but let me know in the comments below which uh, other color you would like me to work with next. I'm planning on doing a monochromatic playlist. I will not do that every week, but eventually we will have a nice bank of monochromatic works that we can play with. So if you could leave colors that you want me to work with and I'll be more than happy to do so. So I hope that this gave you some inspiration. I hope also that you will practice a one brush stroke leaf and let me know how that goes as well for you. I want to say a big thank you to my awesome patrons for supporting my art over at Patreon. A special thank you to Steph and Danae for holding the edges on that day. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon.